Beautiful. So good morning, all. I'm so glad you're here. I want to take us into a meditation based on gratitude this morning. So if you will, and I, and I invite you to actually move with me, use your hands, because um, it's good to get our body, our body and our spirit, our body and our mind working together. Okay. So what I'd like to see you do is I'd like you to bring your hands up. They don't have to be exactly in a prayer pose. It could be this. And I'd like you to feel in a very slow way to get really present to your hands. Take your fingers and run them over one hand and touch the palms of your hands. Touch each finger of that hand. Look at the hand. And when you have finished really investigating it, do the same thing on the other side. And while you're doing this, realize these hands are the hands of love. This is how you care for yourself. This is how you love yourself. This is how mothers have held their children and grandmothers hold their grandchildren. This is how you and I engage the world and, and relish in the this, this sensation of Ice, when we pick up ice, and we feel that. When we're cold and we put on gloves and we experience the warmth of love, our hands are out. The, one of the most important tools we have for engaging the world. So just for a moment, really just love on them. Love on them, love on them, love on them. Of course, you could do this with every body, body part. And truth is, we probably should take time to appreciate every part, every, every limb, every organ, every sense that we have. Why? Because it's our face suit this time around, and it deserves our love. It deserves our love and it deserves our gratitude. And sometimes when we do not pay enough attention to it, what happens is we miss the signals for healing and wholeness. So just one more second. Feel that gratitude. Thank you. Thank you for participating. And maybe while I'm talking to you, maybe even where you can't say, yeah, Ty, giving yourself a good old fashioned hug. Absolutely. Maybe you'll even keep touching your hands just a little bit or touching your body and just love on yourself. God knows we need to love on ourselves more. So the title for today is you cannot outgive God. It is impossible. Now, if you don't, I'm not going to be switching words. If you don't like the word God, just put, replace it with the word consciousness or spirit or energy, whatever works for you. I'm going to use the word God because I'm good with that now. I've gotten good with God. <laughs> That's what I like to say. God is more generous than you can imagine. You must raise your expectations, declare louder than ever before, imagine big and allow. But in order to do all that, we have to shift some things. So I'm not here to talk to you about richness, even though we're completing the month about riches. I'm not here to talk to you about richness in, in the predictable way. But I'm here to say to you that until you are ready to get unstuck, now, whether it's financial, whether it's tough relationships, 
whether it is a job you don't like, whether it's a health challenge, until you are ready to get unstuck and receive the blessings of that stuckness, struggle will continue. Struggle is not imposed upon us. Struggle is an effect. It is not a cause. We've got to get this down to a science that if I had a blackboard here, I guess if I was a little more tech savvy, I would make that work. I would draw a line on the board and on one side of the line would be the word cause and on the other side would be the word effect. And I would constantly be redirecting your attention because humans get cause and effect backwards and, it, and it, we get distracted by effect. And so we get so caught up in trying to fix effect and we try to heal effect and we try to take medicine so we don't feel the things that are in effect. And we damn it. But when we damn it and we con when we condemn the, the, the effect, we are misdirecting our power and our attention. There, it is absolute. Struggle is an arrow pointing the way. It is pointing the way. But if you look at the end of that, instead of where it's pointing to, if you look at the pointer and not where it's pointing to, again, we will be misdirected. If you are stuck in a cycle, if I am stuck in a cycle, the cycle has a purpose. Until we benefit from it, it remains in our life. It remains. There's no, you know, you have to get off the merry-go-round merry of the, the recycling of pain and the recycling of lack and the recycling of fear, but we have to get off of it and go to cause. Not simple, but it is the way that law, that's the way the law works. The war, law works by delivering to us that which we have the seeds we have sown, okay? We have, stop, have to stop looking at the whirling of the world around us, like being on a merry-go-round. You know, stop looking at, you know, if you sit on a merry-go-round, it's going around, you look and you see, and you see what's going on all around you. When actually, if you want to know how to work it, you're going to look at the center of the merry-go-round. You're going to look at the mechanism. You can't see how it works from sitting on the ponies. You have to get to the inside. You get that? You have to get to the inside. And it's not dissimilar to pain. Pain is very distracting. And now I'm talking about physical pain. Pain is very distracting. Of course, we don't want to be in pain. Of course, we want to alleviate our discomfort. Of course, we want to get rid of ailments and, and things that have been, um, that we've been experiencing. I get it. But if we look to alleviate the pain before benefiting from the lesson, from, from what is there for us, we will keep recycling and recycling and recycling. You, to, to get out, you have to get in. You can't get out of it until you get into it. Not possible. And we get confused. Be we get confused because of discomfort. And I get it. But, you know, we, and then what happens is, the, so let's start to cross this over into demonstrating a manifestation. So everybody comes, you know, um, everybody like you, like you're, you're the everybody of the world. So we come to a spiritual community. And we hear people like me and everybody, Tony, Reverend Neil and Joel and everybody, we hear, yes, you deserve more. Yes, you deserve good. You are worthy. You should have your God-given divine birthright with no exceptions. So then what happens is we believe that, but we miss the other part of the equation. In order to acquire more or to have that experience, whether that experience is getting out of lack 
or whether the experience is getting out of pain, we have to plant seeds. If you're experiencing something, you planted those seeds. Stop thinking it's somewhere outside of you. Now, we can plant all kinds of different seeds. For me, I've come to realize I have planted an abundance of seeds of love. I'm so blessed to experience the abundance of love that I experience. And I'm so happy to report to you the increase of them experience of self-love and self-acceptance. Here it is 25 years in this teaching. I'm about to be 65, by the way. So that's many years doing this work. And for all this time, I've known that self-love is at the heart of everything. So I have been planting seeds and, 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 har and um, sowing the seeds of self-love and love for so long that I have an abundance of it. I don't have to wonder where it came from. It's been my focus. But what, what happens is we don't take seriously the seeds that have to be sown for manifestation. We just sit there and we say repeatedly mindless repetitions of I am rich, I am rich, I am rich. You can't have it without doing the work, folks. It is a formula. The, the, it's like if my, my hands are forming a seed pod, the seed, uh, so if I sow a seed of love, I expect love. If I sow a seed of, a, of abundance and prosperity, then I expect that. If I sow a seed of peace, then I'll work to experience that. It is built within the seed, but the seed must be planted. It must be planted. It must be fertilized. It must be tended to. And you got to pull the weeds that would strangle it out, which is the personal work. But we, unfortunately, spiritual communities have put the cart before the horse in what they think has to happen in order to benefit and to experience more. So let me be clear. There is no harvest until you plant the seeds. So to plant the seeds, let's take it again, if financial, if, if you want to increase financial abundance, that, that is your focus, let's say that's your focus, then it has to be shifts of consciousness plus. When many, 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 many humans make the mistake of when things feel tight, we clamp down and we hold on to the little that we have and what you're actually doing simultaneous, I mean, um, not, I don't mean simultaneously, what you're doing there is you're actually planting a seed of fear. You don't realize you're doing that. But when we clamp down, there's this un, uh, subliminally, that's the word I meant. We are planting subliminal seeds of fear when we clamp down. If when, when COVID happened and we had to separate and hone down into our own houses, even though you know we kept going, there was a subliminal message of fear planted everywhere. And it has impacted our world tremendously. But the, the, the result of some seeds are not always obvious or the seed that you're planted that creates an, an, um, an impact is not always obvious. If you want to break free of a limitation, you have to give beyond what you're giving. If you want to have more love, you have to give more love beyond what you're giving. If you want to experience creativity, you have to give to that creativity. And I don't know what that looks like for you. For, for, 
my my eldest son right now has an NFT project. And if you don't know what NFTs are, just look it up because I can't even begin to explain it to you. But it's a new form of digital something. But his focus is supporting artists. It's supporting artists. So he is planting seeds so that artists can be more creative and be more valued in the world. What seeds are you planting? I have a person in my life that has been a challenge. It's been, this person has been a challenge. I've known them about 15 years. They come and go in my life, in and out. And I, I just got to say, there's been some really hard moments with this person. And about a week and a half ago, there was, I, I was almost, I, I wrote back an email and I said to this person, I'm done. Now, in the back of my mind meant, I'm done. I'm not talking to you. I'm tossing you out of my life. I ain't having it. I'm done. And then I realized it's not who I am because that's not the seeds I have sown. The seeds I have sown are seeds of love. And I will not be tempted to think that person is a source of discomfort for me. Do I have to engage that person? No. No, we never have to engage anybody we don't want to. Let me be clear. And so what I did is I reached out and I had the most loving conversation with this person. Loving conversation. And I walked away from that conversation remembering who I am even more. There is no one that can cause pain outside of me. I cause that pain. If I'm feeling pain in my body, then I have to look here. I have to look at my beliefs. I have to look at where I'm ignoring myself. I have to look at where am I not taking care of my body? Where am I not loving myself enough to do the right thing? So richness and abundance and that is still the results of what seeds am I planting? What am I investing in myself? You get that? Does that make sense? Can I get a few thumbs up here maybe? Good, that's, yeah, okay. And you know, I guess it's cause I'm older. It is, but richness to me does not mean what it used to mean. Rich to me now means joy. Rich to me now means love. Rich to me now means spending time with my grandchildren, my husband and I taking a ride up the country, going for lunch and chatting in the car. It doesn't hold the same impetus that it used to. That doesn't mean I don't like money. I like money, but I love the richness that I feel out of being in love. And I don't even mean with my husband, but in love with life in love with life. The work that we're doing right now, the work that we're doing, the anti-racism work with the healing, the divide, I'm watching people blossom out of their limited, rigid, they didn't even know that they were having an issue place to embracing a whole new possibility in the world to embracing their real responsibility. So what these people are doing is suddenly they're becoming more aware and their awareness is making them socially plugged in in ways they have never been. It's stunning to watch. It is stunning to witness, right, Mo DeBrito? Mo's in my group. It's been beautiful, beautiful to watch this. So the seeds I've sown there, I'm reaping the harvest and the joy of witnessing growth and emancipation of these individuals. If you want more money in your life, go for it. 
but stop thinking it's outside of you. Stop thinking, I mean, and yes, you have to do something, by the way. You can't just sit home and pray, do nothing and have an expectation. What you do is you give, be generous. This is why my husband and I tithe. We tithe not to be rich, but we tithe to expand our consciousness. If you want to expand your consciousness, literally right now, if you want to start expanding your consciousness, become a tither. You will come to the edge of fear and you will come to the edge of, oh my God, I don't have enough. And you will come to the edge of how can I do this? How can I pay my bills? How can I give away 10%? And then what will happen invested long enough with the spiritual investment, there will suddenly be a shift inside of you. And the investment is the expansion of consciousness. Once I moved from being a giver to being a tither, my world went pop. My consciousness expanded. And it's been good. Can it be better? Always. So when I'm ready to have that cycle increase, I will do something differently. But I want to leave you. This is what I want to leave you with, whether it's money, relationships, health, wanting more joy. Do not get confused with effect. Don't let yourself try to, the saying I learned a long time ago, it's like trying to rearrange the chairs on the Titanic. Not very smart, is it, right? Instead, go to cause. And in cause, let your inner belief and your outward actions be synchronized. So if I'm saying I'm rich, but I don't pay a bill right away, it's disconnected. If I'm saying I'm abundant, but I cheap out that waiter or waitress, even when they're not nice to me, because <laughs> I would think about that. When I cheap out on them, I'm, I'm in disconnect. Be of generous nature, be of generous action. And then your action and your consciousness will sync up and bring you closer to the experience that you're seeking to have. So I'm gonna ask you right now, real quick, those of you who are here to use the chat, I'm gonna ask you what seeds would you like to sow right now? What new seeds would you like to sow in your life right now? Beautiful. Keep going. Give me more. Yes. 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 Everybody, I hope you're reading these because as a collective community, as we read these and take them on, we are helping to invest the yes in these for these individuals. This is actually a prayer. This is a prayer being requested and being acted upon right now. Yes. Yes. I'm not sure I know what that one means, Madiva. Can you give me another word with that? I see you here, but. So with every new seed that you want sown, 
what we have to do is stop being distracted by what we see and go to what we know. Yes, 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 Ty, yes, yes, beautiful. There is no thing, there is no person, there is no outside, there is no other. Hear me now. There is no thing, no person outside of you, no conditions outside of you that's greater than the seeds that you plant and then you fertilize with your actions. We are not victims. We are powerful, powerful beings. So let's take all of these seeds, which are prayer requests into mind right now and go into treatment around this. I declare with all the power of the universe that avails itself to me, through me, in me, as me, right now, as I speak this word for every individual listening, whether they're listening now or at a later time, I declare that the shift happening is shifts in consciousness, but shifts of seeds planted and sown and watered and fertilized and met with action. Action of self-love, action of self-care, action of de generosity. I declare for each one of us that we move our doubt and fear and procrastination out of the way, out of the way and embrace the wholeness, the possibility the beauty of life itself. God is so good. God is good. And I'm hoping you're saying in your mind all the time, all the time. Feeling the blessings, feeling the movement of mind and heart. I'm so grateful. So I surrender this word to love, to law, and to the awe of life itself. And to the whole. For anyone here who does not have a prayer partner, get one. If you have one, Get another. Stay prayed up. You need help with that? Reach out to us. Reach out to us. And by the way, Gary Frank, congratulations on being published. Kudos to you, kiddo. You hung in there. And he did the work, and he did the work, and he planted the seed, and he did the work until the yes came. So hallelujah for you. Congrats. So bless.